Well, night two certainly had a tough act to follow on the heels of what we got with night one. And from where I'm sitting right now, night two delivered where it needed to most. Yeah! What a WrestleMania weekend we had. Let's talk about night two now, shall we? Getting right into it, which is exactly the mantra that Brock Lesnar had tonight. He said, I want to go first, get there, do some stuff, F5, one, two, three, win for me, brother, and I'm getting the fuck out of town. You gotta kinda like that. Honestly, this match with Omas and Brock Lesnar landed. Went about five minutes, that's all the fuck you needed to get, that's all you wanted to get. And you're going, putting this match up against the night one opener of Austin Theories and John Cena. There's one that was clearly better than the other, and it absolutely was Brock Lesnar and Omas. Get in, get your shit done, and get the fuck out of Dodge. I'm kind of down with that. Although, I would have rather given these guys five more minutes to take away five minutes from that women's showcase Fatal 4-Way tag team match. Oh, God. Just, eh. Shayna Baszler coming out with the Cena broomstick up the ass walk. Ronda Rousey four years ago was main eventing WrestleMania. And now she's here barely doing shit in a glorified Divas era tag match. I mean, tell me I'm wrong here, but that's basically what the fuck this was. I didn't care about it. Don't pretend like you cared about it. The crowd there clearly didn't care about it. Rousey comes in and gets the submission win, and nobody gave a fuck. Just like apparently the WWE didn't give a fuck about Bobby Lashley this year. Oh boy. We're going to have you make an appearance, Bobby. This is going to be great. You're going to come out with that huge-ass Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal trophy. You're going to hold it up, and then that's it. And you leave them wanting more. That's what Vince McMahon's mustache thinks. That's such good shit. I can't blame fans for being irked about this, especially what happened later on in the night. <laughs> I can't blame Bobby Lashley for being pissed about this. The shit with Bray Wyatt goes sideways. He gets put into a program he probably wanted no fucking part of and it cost him a match at WrestleMania. Hopefully they rectify this post-WrestleMania because he deserved better than this. Uh, the Intercontinental Championship triple threat match was great. It's Sheamus, it's Gunther, it's Drew McIntyre, it's hard hitting, it's physical, it's believable. It's not a bunch of high spots and shit. It's just, you know, as Big E would say, big meaty men slapping meat, but it's physicality. It's brute strength. It is the type of stuff you don't get nearly enough in wrestling today, so it really, really stands out. This is about as over as I can recall Sheamus being in a long time. And honestly, I know a lot of fans were disappointed a few months back or a little while back when they found out Gunther wasn't going to be taking on Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Realistically, this match here was a better showcase for Gunther and his skills and his talents, especially since he was going to retain, than taking on Brock Lesnar. In terms of Brock... It worked better for him being in that match where he said, I could go over, brother. He said, I'm not losing to the black man at WrestleMania. I'm not losing to the black man anywhere. That's Brock Lesnar for you all fucking day. But Gunther here gets in a match where he can showcase more of his skills. He can showcase more of what he does. It is better off for him. I don't apologize for saying that because it's true and it clearly showed here. This match was really good. And that's how you do contract negotiation. Drew McIntyre, you're eating a pinfall, brother. Gunther retains. That was really, really good. The Raw Women's Championship was very good. Uh, personally, I thought this women's championship match was much better than the night before. I think the crowd was into this more from the beginning. To me, there was more suspense. You know, but did you really think Oscar was going to win here? <laughs> They're going to give Bianca that 3-0, and three straight championship matches, won at WrestleMania. It's a whole new streak. But it was good. It's just, I wish the build-up, I wish the storyline heading into this would have been better to make the match feel a whole lot better. But honestly, would it have even mattered? Because here you are before this match, and if you're a pre 
Peacock Premium Plus subscriber, you get a video package that's a part of the presentation of the show that actually gets you into the mode and gives you a recap of why you should care about this. Otherwise, for that, you're getting some plugs and ads for crappy Peacock content that you don't care about. The fuck? The fuck? Oh, anyways, what's next? Oh, man. Ooh, I'm going to keep it classy here. I'm going to keep it classy here. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> here's Snoop and Miz. <laughs> Night two. And what a spot if you're the Miz, right? <laughs> you get to host WrestleMania. You got a match on night one against a returning guy in Pat McAfee. And night two, you know they're coming back to the well here. So who's his opponent going to be for night two? Is it going to be Bobby Lashley? No! Is it going to be LA Knight? Hell no! <laughs> here comes the money! <laughs> Shane O'Mac is back! <laughs> 53-year-old Shane O'Mac is back Let the young lions roar! <laughs> oh. <laughs> that motherfucker was winded coming down the ramp. You knew you were in for something spectacular. Shane immediately potatoes Miz like only Shane McMahon can do because he can't control his goddamn adrenaline. <laughs> Shane O'Mac wants to go all athletic. What about his ACL? And it's gone! <laughs> oh, oh, Shane will be okay. <laughs> you can laugh about this one. If you can laugh at Royal Rumble 2005, if Vince McMahon getting into the ring and tearing both of his fucking quads, then you can laugh your ass off about Shane McMahon blowing out his knee after making a big triumphant comeback after being gone for over a year. Ha! Let them young lions roar! And to make the save, credit to the back, the gorilla position, Probably calling in the audible. The ref, Jessica Carr, getting Snoop's attention saying, Hey, rock bottom, rock bottom. And these guys all happen to make an audible here and pretend like that whole Shane McMahon shit just didn't happen. <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. The Shane O'Mac comes down. <laughs> You're going to the ER now. <laughs> Snoop hits the world's worst rock bottom after Stiff and Miz and damn self. One, two, three. Snoop wins in the match of Miz versus Shane McMahon. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about WrestleMania moments? There you go, baby. We will never, e e e ever forget this. Oh, oh, Psycho Sid, you got some company, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god back back to business back to business back to business okay the hell in a cell match the demon finn balor and edge i'll say this finn balor centrance it works his body paint absolutely fucks right like those are the two things he's got about him. And then once the match actually starts, where do you go from there? Well, maybe this was going to be a chance to get something out of the 41-year-old young lion. But of course, you had the mid-match stoppage because after the uh, fucking ladder spot where Edge throws the ladder at Finn Balor's head, he got busted wide open, so he's pouring out blood. And it just ruined the vibe of this match. Like this was heading towards something really, really good. And that stoppage there right in the middle, it was just awkward. This match really never got back going. The only saving grace here was that the right guy won. And that's going to be one of the themes of this night, especially when we talk about the main event, right? Is a lot of people thinking the right guy didn't win here. Look, the whole premise of this story is about Edge wanting to get revenge for how Finn Balor and the Judgment Day fucked him over, fucked his family over. Like in the I Quit match, forcing them to say I Quit because they were messing with Beth Phoenix. Edge needed to win here. 
just because you have the 48, 49 year old young lion going up against the 41 year old young lion doesn't mean that said 48, 49 year old young lion always needs to fucking lose. Just like Ray and Dominic the night before. You can't always have the young guy go over because then it ruins the surprise. It gets rid of the spontaneity. It makes shit feel entirely too predictable. And it also creates a diminishing return of value when one of these legends, these Hall of Famers, is beaten. It was my beef in night one. You know, basically Cena phoned it in. Um, but, you know, Cena should have won. Maybe he wouldn't have phoned it in then, right? You can't always have these guys show up and lose all the time. At some point in time, you get a minimal return on that. You just do. So, it was a match I would have hoped would have been a lot more. It got ruined in the middle of it. God forbid you have a bunch of blood in a fucking Hell in a Cell match. I'm just saying. But then we get to the main event. And you know, from Bianca coming out earlier to the Cody Rhodes uh, girls dance group from Compton. Yes, that's right. You really thought tonight might be the night that Cody was going to do it for the ancestors, right? Cody Luther King. <laughs> Sorry, I need some water before we go off on this one. Because man, oh man, you just knew they were going to fucking have Brandy at ringside. You just fucking knew it. Those entrances took forever. But my God, what a main event. The story that these two guys told from Roman coming in really being too cocky and too sure of himself to as the match went along, Cody's confidence increases and Roman starts to be show real vulnerability here, at least for a period of time. And still getting some help along the way. But then the guys come out talking about Jimmy and Jay. Here comes Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. One of those exa rare examples of you do a bunch of superfluous booking of the main event and it actually works. This match was great. And the finish went exactly how the fuck it should have went. Roman Reigns, one, two, three, in the middle of the ring, bitches. Now you're going to sit there and cry and rant about this. He said, oh my God, this was the moment to put Cody Rhodes over. Oh my God, I can't believe they did this. Well, you've been paying attention the past few years. They never send the fans home happy with both nights of WrestleMania. Number two, you can't just completely obliterate and destroy the bloodline in one weekend. You already had the Usos lose the tag titles on night one. The bloodline has been far too integral of a story to the WWE the past couple of years, you can't then follow up and have Roman lose the belt here. Furthermore, they needed to establish Cody being capable and being of the caliber to deliver a main event story and a main event performance, and by God, he fucking did that tonight. Having him win it here, when there is much more that can be told in the story, when there's more that needs to go, would have been stupid. That would have been Mark fanboy dumb shit. And then where the fuck do you go from there for both Cody and frickin' Roman? Well, you, you had to crowd so hot for him. You know what? Life sucks. You don't always get what you fucking want. And sometimes you have to put forth a little more effort to fucking get it. This is the first showdown between these two guys. Why would you blow your wad here? You could do this down the road once Roman Reigns gets past a thousand days in his reign. You could do this at SummerSlam. If you want to sit there and you believe you're going to actually have Roman and Rock at 40, then Rock comes out. Here's the real leader of the bloodline and he cost Roman the belt. And man, now you're off to the fucking races. Or you put in some type of Hell in a Cell type of match to where nobody else is allowed to get involved. And that's where Roman gets his comeuppance. If you were so worried about tonight had to be the night because there was going to be no better opportunity than this. Then you know what? If WWE can't come back in a few months and make you want this even more. Then Cody isn't the right dude to beat Roman Reigns and further validates why the fuck he shouldn't have beat Roman Reigns tonight. This was a great match. Fantastic story. 
I can't stand Cody Rhodes. But if they put the belt on him at SummerSlam, I will begrudgingly accept it. Because he went out there and fucking proved he was worthy of that type of spot tonight. This is his payback for not destroying the throne a few years ago. Some of you are going to want to believe and all this other shit. No, the reality is the character wasn't there yet. The story wasn't there yet. Just because you have the hardest of hardcore wrestling fans at WrestleMania wanting to make this be true, that doesn't mean that it should be true at this fucking time. Who, who, who else is there for Roman? Who said the story between him and Cody Rose has to be fucking done? What's wrong with you? I don't be stupid. They were this close to a thousand days. You think they're going to let that history go by? Especially with the reports of WWE being sold to Endeavor and all this shit. Like why would they rock the boat any more than they need to right now? You got one element of the bloodline showing vulnerability on Saturday night when the Usos lost their belts. You would undercut all the WWE programming if you had Cody beat Roman tonight, period. You do it in waves. There are chapters to fucking stories. And I know in our instant gratification society, everybody wants to sit there and say, well, I want it and I want it now, so I gotta have it now. That's not the way the fucking world is supposed to work and it still doesn't work in some cases. There's so much more to go. So much more that can happen here. Just be patient. Yeah, I realize, me of all people saying that. And you're saying, well, you're probably just saying that because you're happy Roman beat Cody Rhodes tonight. Oh, sure, there is absolutely a fucking part of that. You're damn right. Because it wasn't the right time to pull the trigger, damn it. If you can't come back in four, four and a half months and get the crowd in a fever pitch for Cody Rhodes or somebody else to take the belt off of Roman Reigns, then they aren't the right dude to fucking begin with, and it's a moot point. I legit popped, though, when Roman got the one, two, three on Cody. Oh, baby! Show that AEW mid-carter how you play things in the big leagues now, brother. <laughs> but no. Cody wins so much more by losing tonight. I promise you. This is just the start of his journey. Talking about finish the story. If you finish the story tonight, then it really wasn't much of a story. You gotta give it more time. And if it's meant to be, it will happen. And when it does, you can have your big moment. But I promise you, WrestleMania 39 was not that time. And when you get a removed from the emotion of the moment, you're going to realize just how right I was.